These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, that would, those would be a very good reactions for us to go over. Let's just take one minute for this though. Wait, don't we have this? Yeah, we have this. Yeah. Alright, this is the new and improved uh, uh, uh -huh. too. Um, because uh, if you guys recall, you have shown me uh, that the old handout wasn't working, right? A couple sessions ago, you guys were complaining, oh, we did all these problems, and we thought it was SN1, and it was really SN2 because of the solvent, right? Yes. Alright, well that was a fair complaint. So, uh, uh, upon further review, um, so what I said in the last handout, so I, I mainly changed page three. So if you look at the table at the bottom of page three. Uh, before, remember, we were using the uh, solvent as a tiebreaker, right? We were using the solvent as a tiebreaker if we had a secondary alpha carbon and uh, a weak base. Um, however, uh, I went through all the problems in the textbook, and they don't actually ever seem to use the solvent as a tiebreaker for that. So I guess I was wrong or at least that's not the way they're looking at it. So actually, um, I took the solvent out of the table. Uh, basically, if you have a secondary alpha carbon and a weak base, it's going to be SN2. Right? That's what you were getting in your work, right? Even though you were using protic solvents, you were still getting SN2 over and over. It's still SN2. So, so what difference does the solvent make? Well, let's say that you're using a, a, a protic solvent. Would the SN2 go fast or slow? I suppose you're using a protic solvent with the SN2. So, but it'll still be SN2. So the only difference that the solvent is going to make is to how well, how fast the SN2 reaction is going to go, but it's still going to be an SN2. All right, now I should still warn you again uh, that there are some exceptions to this, uh, to this table, but I don't think they would come up on an exam or possible, but it's not too likely. I think this would still be pretty reliable uh, on the exam. All right, so that's the main change. I took the solvent out of the table. I also, if you look at the bottom of page two, I uh, added cyanide as a nucleophile. We've seen that cyanide is a common nucleophile now, so I added cyanide as a nucleophile. And I also added, what's that new big thing in the leaving groups? Sulfonate. All right, we've seen sulfonates come up a bunch, so I, I wrote down the sulfonate. Now remember, um, what, what does that little dash there mean? So this is not a minus. This is supposed to be where we're attached to the alpha carbon. So the point is, who does the alpha carbon attach to, the oxygen or the sulfur? The oxygen. The oxygen. So the whole point of this little dash is just to remind you that the alpha carbon would be attached to the oxygen. Of course, I'm just drawing the leaving groups. So I didn't draw in the alpha carbon. But that dash is just to show you um, that uh, this is where the alpha carbon would be. In particular, the alpha carbon is not in here. Because who is this carbon attached to? Sulfur. Yeah, this is just part of the leaving group. This is just part of the leaving group. I think you've seen, for example, this could be CF3. This could be CF3, or it could be, um, pardon? Methyl. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I think this is mesylate right here. This is just methyl sulfonate. Methyl sulfonate. And this is tosylate, which is toluene sulfonate. Tosylate is just toluene sulfonate. I don't think it's too important to have these memorized. The point is you should look at all these and say, aha, good leaving group. And also, is this the alpha carbon? No. No. Is this the alpha carbon? No. No. The alpha carbon is the one I didn't draw connected to this oxygen over here. These two oxygens are connected to the sulfur. Right. Okay. So, uh, that is. so that's a mesylate, right? This is mesylate. That's just short for methyl sulfonate. And then the one under it is, is a tosylate. This is called toluene. You learned about that next semester. So this is called toluene sulfonate. Uh, the important thing is that they're both sulfonates. So the point is, this, R, this is the R group. The R group could be almost anything. These are just some common R groups over here. 
All right, so when you get home, you should throw away the old bad handout and replace it with this new handout. If you've taken some notes on the old handout, you should put them into this new handout over here because uh, we saw the old handout wasn't quite cut. All right. All right, so uh, you give me uh, these uh, reactions here. So yeah, there's some important stuff in here. So. And we also have a few questions to ask you later. Okay. Suppose we had a synthesis problem here, like this. Can anyone suggest how we could go from the starting material to the product here? You can add P, uh, P, 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 C, C? P C, no, no, no. It'll be like PBR3, but the P C L3. Yeah. Or you can just add yeah. P C L3. Okay, I didn't remember uh, that one. Yeah, it seems like we could do that. Um, why can't you just do an SN2? Because OH is not a good leaving group. Yeah, so the problem here is that this is not a good leaving group. Um, so there, there still would be ways to get an SN2 out of this. Um, however, one way to get around this is uh, to use these special chlorinating agents here. All right, so this might be a special chlorinating agent. Now, this is not the special chlorinating agent that you used in the little uh, notes that you gave me. So do you guys remember another chlorinating agent besides PCL3? Um, this kind of just has to be memorized. The one they used, this oh, is more common. Too, yeah. Right. In fact, does anyone have their book with them? No. Oh, no. OK. <laughs> All right, so I don't actually even uh, remember whether this is a commonly used chlorinator or not. Um, are you guys sure about this PCL3? I don't know. No, we were just making that up because of PBR. Ah, okay. Yeah, so uh, this may or may not be effective, but what's usually used is SOCl2. So we'll stick with the SOCl2. And it's a good chlorinating agent? Is that what we said? Yeah, it's a chlorinating when agent. When you have a bad leaving group. Uh, it's a good, it, what, yeah, what does it chlorinate? It chlorinates alcohols, period. So this is a very specific reaction. Um, so what would be the general form of this reaction? This is the general form. So this uh, is something we just use on alcohols. Uh, and in particular, this is used for primary and secondary alcohols. Primary and secondary alcohols. Uh, you can see that's what we have here, a primary. What does the PBR3 do? Anyone remember? It would basically do the same thing. However, instead of ending with a scale, you have a, P, a BR. So it's, again, one of those things that you use, like... Um, and what functional group does it attack? Uh, the, uh, the alcohol. Hydroxyl. Yeah, the alcohol. That's good. So you would start with the same starting material, and you would get this. And again, this is for a primary or a secondary. This will attack a primary or a secondary alcohol. OK, um, and we're not going to worry about the mechanisms for these. I don't think you'd be responsible for these mechanisms, although I think there's a couple of details about it in the text. I don't think you uh, would worry about that. You just know mechanically how to do this. And this is very simple. You erase the alcohol, you erase the hydroxy, and replace it with the halogen. And we're not going to worry what happens to the sulfur or the phosphorus or anything. So this is a very straightforward reaction. Uh, again, this, uh, this only, uh, so would you ever do this? No. No, because you can just use HCl and make it. Sodium HCl. HCl, yeah, and HCl minus. Right, but would this work anyway? No, would this work? It, it only works with alcohols. Yeah, it's got to be an alcohol starting material. 
Okay, so it's only used. So you should memorize uh, these are things that you do on alcohols. Like you're saying, you wouldn't need that anyway because that already has a good leaving group over there. All right, and uh, while we're at it then, would we use these for this guy? No. No. Because yes. it's a tertiary. Because this is a tertiary, and these are for primaries and secondaries. So what would we do here? Well, we would just use uh, another reaction in our toolkit. Let's do, let's go through the mechanism for this. This is actually very likely to come up on the test. So let's go through the mechanism for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds a little better. 